You know that this is our fourth anniversary, um, an annual asbestos, fourth annual Asbestos Awareness Day as well. And so to begin the presentation, I wanted to take a look back in time, Ms. Kazanel, and that would be directed to you. She's my soul sister, so I could say that. Sweetly, we were able to honor Lori in 2005. You can also see Gayla Benefil and Jill Vaughn, who's a patient. So these awards started in 05, and we had great pleasure recognizing people for their work that they've done, whether it's unity, hope, or inspiration. In 06, we actually honored Senator Harry Reid and Chuck Straw from, from Canada and Paul Brodeur, who's an amazing author, and Jim Fight and a pathologist from Mount Sinai who's very well respected, Dr. Suzuki. 07, we took a bit of a turn. We went to towards Patty Murray because she was doing landmark legislation. Of course, Dr. Mike Harbett, who we all love very dearly. Uh, Mr. Pat Martin from the Canadian side, and Paul Zingabom and the uh, Paul and Michelle in the audience today received our Tribute of ins Inspiration Award. Also, in 07, we began a new tradition, which was honoring someone posthumously, which was uh, the Alan Reinstein Memorial Award w w was set up, and Les Gramstead was honored, and Narita was given that award, and the Card Clinic delivered it to her. It meant a lot to ADIO, and I think to Narita and the Card Clinic. So we're going to start off today. It's 08. We're going to, Dr. Castleman, are you awake? Okay, good. Thing. Well, this is a unique pleasure for me. Um, I know that many of you are familiar with Dr. Castleman and with the work he has done on behalf of American asbestos victims. And I dare say that some of the um, defense lawyers in this audience would uh, call you um, many things, none of which would be very nice. <laughs> However, what you might not be aware of is how much work Barry has done internationally to spread the message. And I'm just going to mention a few of these um, of events. In 2000, we wanted to organize the Global Asbestos Congress in Brazil. It was the first time ever no one had ever done it before. It was crazy. It was a crazy idea that we thought we could do it. And it was crazy because we actually did. But we couldn't have done it without Barry. We couldn't have done the Global Asbestos Congress in Japan without Barry. When the World Trade Organization was hearing the case brought by the Canadians against the French asbestos ban, Barry was there to help uh, the EU lawyer to defeat the Canadian uh, attempt to reverse the asbestos ban in France. In Thailand, in India, in where else? In Poland, in France, in Belgium. This man has been there, and he's talked with us uh, to various people that needed to hear the message. So I'm really proud that it's uh, given to me to, to present this honor to him. I can't think of anyone more deserving to have an award in the name of Irving J. Selikoff. And I hope you will um, take some time now to congratulate this wonderful man. Thank you, Barry. Thank you so much. You don't get too many awards uh, being an activist and a troublemaker and a critic of uh, how some people make money in this world. Uh, don't hold back there. But, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I was going to start this by saying, ladies and gentlemen and defense counsel, <clears throat> uh, keeping that all in mind, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to fellow activists and people who are out there trying to make this world a better place uh, uh, to, to, to recognize uh, their own people for, for doing good things. I think it's really important. I think that uh, the media, for one thing, should much do much more to, to feature stories of exemplars so that younger people can have some idea what they might want to do with their lives by seeing people that are trying to make the world a better place and in different ways. There are lots of ways that people do that. But uh, again, I just want to say thank, thank you very much. Vandiver Brown probably got more, more honors from the establishment uh, than I expect to see in my lifetime. He was the lawyer who, who was the general of the cover-up uh, for Johns Manville in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, but he was a corporate executive. He lived on 67 Park Avenue, uh, had an apartment fit for a queen. Um, he was a closet gay also. Uh, and, uh, but uh, he probably got uh, many honors for his uh, uh, various uh, charitable contributions and things like that. But uh, anyway, I want to encourage you all to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, 
this is really very satisfying work what we do to try and and make things better some people call it a dedication but it's really just something we do uh, as much for our own gratification as anything else that this is your this is your only lifetime and you may as well do something with it that that, that is the best you can do good luck to you all you. Oh, thank you, you know it's a great honor to me to present this tribute of hope award to Aubrey Miller I've known Aubrey for many many years he worked with me in the public health service when I was active and uh, I should have worn my uniform up here to <laughs> give you this award I can still wear it and I can still fit in it but uh, I think that there's so many achievements that Aubrey has done in his career I was talking to him briefly and one of the things he feels most proud about and I, I think this is a great achievement that is setting up the community clinic clinic in the Libby Montana area and I think for a public health service officer this is really exemplary and it's something that shows how much he cares not just to pick up a paycheck for the government but to actually make a difference that's going to stand out and be in that community long after he hangs up his coat and uh, other people will carry on but it's one of the true stories of heroism that Audrey has set up for the people in this community and that's only one thing he's done he's leaving for Turkey on Wednesday to look at the zeolite issue in Turkey and the high rate of mesothelioma in that community and that's a whole nother story that maybe he'll tell us about next year when he comes here but I hope that one thing that happens is with his new move to Washington that they squeeze these things together and make him an admiral too. So. <laughs> here you go. Okay. You can set this on your desk or you want us to send it to Washington or do you want us to <laughs> let you take it back home with you? I better carry it. I don't trust the airlines. No. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Admiral. Um, as as Dr. Lemon mentioned, I, I've had the I'm going to set this down for a moment. The, the honor uh, and, and privilege to be mentored by uh, by individuals like Dr. Met, like Dr. Lemon and and a number of folks here that have contributed to asbestos research, treatment, and prevention. You know, with much of their careers and their lives and and their dedication, and to be able to. Um, follow in their footsteps or at least um, sit upon their shoulders to some extent in, in my career and have had an opportunity to work in Libby in a situation that um, uh, is extremely provocative and, and terribly um, sad for the situation that we face that, this, that the, the asbestos was allowed to result in such contamination and such human suffering and tragedy. Um, it is beyond the pale sometimes and it, it is part of the passion that we bring to the situation uh, of trying to help people there and the fact that you know I I represent you know I'm a government worker <laughs> and uh, and getting awards is not something common for us um, but I do represent the tip of an iceberg of a group of government workers uh, both at EPA and other agencies that, that have invested their, 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 their personal, professional, and passion into asbestos illnesses in this country and are working hard. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, in much way, uh, accept this award on behalf of all of them. So I'd like to thank the people um, in my family that continue to support and provide foundation for me to be away from home and be consumed both professionally and personally by the situations that I work on. And it, and at least to have the opportunity to to be here and share um, our our stories and, and and issues and concerns with asbestos around the country. One thing that uh, that's obviously we've had an opportunity to, to work on is the ban asbestos bill, which you know we all are looking forward to something positive that actually is a meaningful ban on asbestos that that really results in, in the prevention of disease. We certainly all want the treatment and care for individuals, but we certainly want to prevent others from, from obtaining or becoming sick with asbestos-related disease. So with this, I, I say the hope 
um, that we all have for this and the fact that I can, can be part of an award that says hope and uh, uh, as part of it is, is truly an honor and a true privilege and humbling for me and uh, I appreciate it and thank you very, very much. Good morning. My name is Arthur Frank. We'll be spending a little more time with you this afternoon. Uh, but for me, it's a great honor to be asked to give the Tribute of Unity Award to the Canadian auto workers. Uh, I think we need to remember that it has been the unions very strongly that have been at the forefront of protecting not only their own members, but many other individuals who come into contact with asbestos and other hazards day in and day out at the workplace. Um, I find it a bit ironic we are here at this wonderful Carmanos Cancer Center. We've had some wonderful scientific presentations this morning. In the lobby of this building is uh, a series of plaques on the wall from we are in Motown from the big auto companies and from others uh, very much related to the world of asbestos. And so they find that it's perhaps okay to treat cancer, uh, but what some of you may not know is that fighting the unions and others uh, have been tens of millions of dollars to try to get the science to come out a certain way so that they don't have to pay monies in court to the victims that they have created. Uh, our luncheon speaker is going to be from the Asbestos Insulation Workers Union, a union that I first learned about when I started with Dr. Selikoff back in 1968. So this is sort of my 40th year of, of doing asbestos work. So I think it is outstanding that the Tribute of Unity Award for this year is given to a major union that has been at the forefront of this fight. So, sorry, can I present this to you and congratulate you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is a, a wonderful honor in, in memory of many of our asbestos victims across Canada, not only in Ontario, but it's certainly coming across in many of our other industries that we do represent that asbestos is continuing its legacy. So this is a very humbling honor on behalf of the victims, the families, and unfortunately the future generations as well that will have to live through the legacy. But we will continue, as the award says, unity of working with organizations not only in North America, but also internationally to ensure that they know what this horrible legacy of asbestos exposure means to them and to make sure that there is an international ban. Thank you. And I just have to add my uh, uh, two words as well. It's, it's quite a pleasure actually and, and a thrill for me to be on the same stage with uh, Barry and Aubrey to get this uh, award because it seems like wherever I go I run into them whether it be in, in India or, or Brazil and different areas of the world where we try and bring the message that we love our country dearly, the same as everybody in this room, but we don't like what they're doing. They're act mining asbestos and sending death around the world for others to use. So I just want to make that message clear and I want to thank Linda. I was really surprised because probably the only organization to get less awards than, than Barry would be our union. So <laughs> we're quite thrilled about this and thank you very much. This is a real honor for me. Um, John Thayer is uh, one of the most courageous men I ever met. After finding that there was asbestos and all other sorts of toxic uh, garbage um, in the tunnels under the United States Capitol, he had the temerity to say something about it. And the most powerful body on the earth um, wouldn't open its doors properly to him, the, that being the Senate in the, in, the, in the House. So John led his men who worked with him in the tunnels, knocked on doors. When they didn't open the doors, he pounded on them. When they didn't open them, then he kicked them open and went to the national media, told what the United States uh, government was doing to his uh, comrades, and they stood together and uh, uh, told us all what was happening. So it was that enormous. You know, if you've ever done anything, if you've ever, ever done anything like this, and I see it all the time in my, in my work as a physician, it takes enormous courage even to turn in a note to an employer that says, my uh, exposure to isocyanates or glues is making me ill and I need two weeks off work. But to go to the United States government and say, you are killing us and you aren't caring anything about it, took a courage that's immeasurable. 
So it's, it's my enormous pride to know you, John, and to be your doctor, and to give you this. I appreciate that. You bet. Uh, it seems like every time I come to one of these, I get sick, so <laughs> I'm going to try to, i got to speak later. Um, the very first people that I want to, uh, you know, say thank you to is my guys. Uh, one of my guys is here today, uh, Scott Smith. He's one of my uh, steam fitters. Uh, I can only lead a charge, you know, and I have to have people that will, you know, follow me along the way and not... Uh, veer off to an, another side type deal. So it was a it's a ten man uh, fight. Uh, we're still fighting it. Um, I'd like to thank Doug, Barry Castleman, um, Dr. Lemon, uh, especially Dr. Harbit for taking the time and courtesy to you know take ten guys under his wing and you know assess them and tell them you know this is what we need to do for the future. Um, you know, gave us honest opinions and treated us with, you know, respect when other people, you know, were beating around the bush. Uh, probably the main person that I like to thank is, uh, uh, Miss Linda. Uh, Linda's, you know, I, I don't even know what to say about Linda. She's, she's courageous and she's done everything and she has treated me like I was her own child and, uh, you know, she makes me feel makes me feel special, and uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I am. But and uh, you know, she's 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 fighting a fight, and she has my support. You know, to two hundred percent. If if she needs me, I'm there. I actually uh, came from Pennsylvania to come here. I'm in school, so makes it a little bit more difficult. But uh, my wife, who's here. You know, I love you, and, uh, you know, thanks for everything. So. And if you ever want to hear a great speaker, stick around, because John, uh, Johnny is going to present some of photographs and compelling argument for asbestos ban and government responsibility. I don't know if those two words go together, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, but we're trying, and we're not giving up. And a little political pressure is a good thing. And um, there's actually a paper being written on the white collar crime under the Capitol. I'm going to set that out as a teaser, but watch for it in the next six months. I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of holiday cards from the Congress. I'd like to welcome up a family, and a family that's become part of mine. And as you know, I cry, so I'm not going to try to minimize my sensitivities and vulnerabilities. And you cry too, so it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Next to me are three amazing women. And I'm going to discuss, and I'm going to share with you a bit about John. He was impressible, indomitable, courageous, irresistible. They're all adjectives that spring into my mind when I think about John McNamara. At the young age of 61, John was diagnosed with mesothelioma, a diagnosis that didn't send him in a spiral down. Instead, the ultimate quest for a cure, not only for himself, but for other sufferers. He was a highly visible supporter of asbestos research charities and a congressional lobbyist for the needs of asbestos victims. Powerful. His search for a cure took him to UCLA. He did this with his wife, T.C., and his family, where the treatment he received was from thoracic surgeon Dr. Robert Cameron here today, and that bought, brought him two more precious years with his family. Not enough, but two more precious years. T.C. and John even established an apartment in Los Angeles for pa that patients undergoing treatment can use because they, too, know that patients and families should always be together. This world is a better place with John McNamara in it, and his loss is keenly felt by his beloved wife, T.C., his beautiful daughters, Catherine and Shannon, and Nicolette, who's um, not here today. She's pregnant. And by all of us in the, in the U.S. mesothelioma community, we've lost a dear friend and a comrade, and to honor his memory, I have been chosen, oops, excuse me, I am presenting the Alan Reinstein Memorial Award 
for John's commitment to advocacy to eradicate mesothelioma and to offer support to patients and their family. And I'll tell you, I'm sorry that Alan and John didn't meet here, but somehow I think they're, I'm not corny, I'm serious, I think they're smiling together and probably renewing your spirit a bit. So I'd like to present the John McNamara, award, Alan Reinstein Award to John McNamara posthumously. For those of you that know me, two minutes to tell you about my boy is impossible. So I will tell you he's been described in so many ways. I like to say he was special and uh, an amazing human being. In light of this horrific nightmare, the wake that followed, John has left the legacy for us to carry on and he surrounded us by some amazing human beings who would have thunk we'd be here. If that being said, our fight will continue. We're here to help, and one of the best parts, if there is a good part from this nightmare, is that our foundation, the John McNamara Foundation, is now with Linda's foundation, and together, we might be unstoppable. <laughs>